Hi, good morning. So yesterday we were discussing about the document types and everything. So let me continue the class. OK, so any document if you take here, document type which we are going to be taking. OK, so there are two options that the we discuss about. OK, yesterday we discuss about the account types and the OK batch input only. Now required during the document entry. What is exactly the meaning of required during the document entry? So there are two there are okay there are two check boxes that there one is reference number another one is the document head text mean to say that whenever you are entering the document type essay for any document if you're posting any document through the essay f-02 i'll come to this transaction okay so the document type i'm going to be taking as an essay essay is nothing but a general ledger essay is nothing but a gl gl document type <laughs> Now, during the posting of the GL document type, this is what exactly we call it as the header, where we can enter the posting date, document type, document date, period, type, company code, currency. Okay, these all are nothing but which comes as the header fields. So in this header fields, you are making this reference number, document header text, reference number, uh, and the document header text. If you want to make it as a mandatory during the document entry then you need to select here a reference number is nothing but for example i have a i have a legacy system for example i have a one legacy system there is the interface is going to be happened from the legacy system to sap system i'm using some legacy system okay uh, for example i'll take one example it, I, i'm just giving one example okay so this is my legacy system where all the invoices are getting posted from this legacy system. For example, the legacy system name is going to be called as AMS. AMS, A, okay, A, ACS, A, A, ACS system, okay. Accounting system, actually. Now, client is using this legacy system and they also have the SAP also. They have the SAP also. They have the SAP also. This is my SAP system. So, every one hour, the bad job is going to be run in the back end. So there are some accounting documents. Okay, the accounting documents will be triggered to my SAP S4 HANA system. Very, very important. So there is an interface is there. There is an interface is there between the accounting system to the SAP system. Now, whatever the accounting documents which are going to be posted here, the accounting documents will be get interface to the SAP S4 HANA and uh, automatically I can see here through the interface a document will be created in our system, document document will be created document number something will be created in my sap so to know what is the reference number because here whatever the document number which has generated the document number 100 or 200 whatever the document number which has generated in sap s4 it is an sap document number but in acs system also there will be a one document number i want to know the document number here also so what we are going to do so during the mapping of the fields, I'm making the reference field as a mandatory. I'm making the reference field as a reference number as a mandatory. Reference number as a mandatory. So what is happening? The number which the number which has generated over here means the document number which has generated means the document number in ACS is nothing but AC 100. Example I'm taking. So this AC 100 is the accounting document in AC system. This will be as a reference number here in my SAP S4 HANA for the document 100. For the document 100. So the reference field, which we is going to be taking as a reference to know for what type of document it is. You can take any reference number. If the interface is not activated, for example, if you don't have any other interfaces, but still you're posting the documents in SAP S4 HANA, you can take the purchase order reference. <laughs> You can take the purchase order reference or sales order number or any other reference number, which is going to be play the major role to identify. And another one is the document headed text. What is the headed text? Whether it is the salaries or whether it is the rent expenses, whether it is the invoice or whether it is the payment, what type of headed text you're going to be maintaining. So these two fields I'm going to be making as a mandatory here. I'm making the, making as a mandatory for which document type for the document type where we can call the ACA like this for every document type. If you take any document type in SAP, we have these fields as a mandatory or not. A, if, it, if you don't want it as a mandatory, then deselect it. If you want to have a mandatory, mean just select it. Okay.
next one okay joint venture joint venture is nothing but a separate module actually we can call it as a so here we are not going to be considering the joint venture accounting so leave it as a blank okay not to discuss more onto this because it is not going to be required for us default values what is the default values here exchange rate type for the fc documents fc is nothing but a foreign currency documents so exchange rate type for the foreign currency there will be three exchange rate types will be there in sap there are three exchange rate types as we discussed in the previous class so one is b another one is g another one is the m b g m b is nothing but which we can call it as a bank selling rate b is nothing but is very very important these all are very very important if if i want to exchange the dollars or if i want to purchase the dollars okay something like now today what is the dollar rate comparing with euro what is the dollar rate comparing with inr so the exchange rates are very very important whenever you are posting any foreign currency transactions whenever posting it not in a local currency i'm talking other than the local currency whichever the whichever the currency you are going to be using so that particular accounting entry we call it as a foreign currency posting actually so there are three types of exchange rates are there one is going to be called as a bank selling the second one is going to be called as a bank buying bank buying and the third one the difference is okay the average between the bank selling and bank average so that we can call it as the bank average bank average so these are the three exchange rate types we have to define between the foreign currency to the local currency for example i'm taking a company code my company code is us 10 my company code is us 10 so what is the local currency here my local currency is usd okay not only i'm posting the transactions in usd for the document type sa i'm talking in the document type sa for uh, uh, because we are discussing more into the document type so i'm not only posting the dollar i'm not only posting the documents in sa uh, sorry in usd okay so in non local currency also means to say other than the local currency usd i'm posting the transactions in foreign currency so if any transactions you are posting in foreign currency for the document type sa sa is nothing but your general ledger for example i'm posting a foreign currency like euro i'm posting a foreign currency like j j by the japanese yen i'm posting a foreign currency like aed united arab dollar i'm posting a foreign currency like inr but my local currency is going to be the usd but other than the usd i am posting any other transaction so what is happening so in sap always expects okay what is the exchange rates between the local currency to the foreign currency you have to define the exchange rate differences between the usd to euro usd to japanese yen usd to aed usd to the yen so where we can maintain here so we have to maintain here so what we have to use the transaction like this so end users will use the transaction here okay okay accounting so i am coming to the financial accounting i am coming to the general ledger i am coming to okay so we just come to the environment come to the current settings and here we have the concept called as enter the translation rates enter the translation rates now in this enter the translation rates if i go to the new entry if i go to the new entry here it is asking about the exchange rate type either it can be the b or g or m i don't three types are there so i'll put it as the m so from valid from which date so if i give the conversion rate what is the today because every one hour you can see there will be some fluctuations are going to happen between the local currency to the foreign currency every one hour every day and so today the day is going to be the 23 01 2020 so today's date so between my local currency is usd and my foreign currency is inr so between the usd to euro e u r euro okay now this is one to one relationship one to one relationship next one i'll take the same m today's date only 23 01 now again reverse it euro to euro to usd euro to usd see here i'm using the exchange rate type as a m and uh, i'm giving the valid date from 23 01 2020 so your local currency is a euro or oh, sorry your local currency is a usd 
can somebody can tell me what is the local currency always i'm talking as a local currency local currency local currency somebody somebody can tell me what is the local currency is it the true that nobody knows or friends i'm putting a question to all of you what do you mean by local currency local currency is a company currency no no it's not a company currency friends only one only one consultant is leading the class or everybody is leading the class what is the local currency here isn't that the currency for the company code currency to the company code company code okay what is the local currency type here what is the local currency type for the company code currency what is the local currency type for the company code N. currency n what sir n m is the bank average n, bank selling person 10 Okay, very good, sir. Ten is the local currency type. Why not others are not opening? Please, why not others? There are so many people. Twenty-two people are the twenty-three students are listening over the class. Why not others? Please, I want an answer from everybody, not with one or two students. very very important i am telling this this classes will not be happened anywhere in the world i am telling even if you search in the youtube or google or anywhere you find out you will not find these kind of classes i am telling frankly i am deadly i am telling that otherwise i'll return your fees back you listen your class you listen the classes freely i'll i'll return your fees back i want the complete participation in the class not only listening please it should be the it should be the it should be the reciprocate between you and me only please definitely i am telling that if if that is not going to be happen if it is only one way it will not work with me please please huh? i request everybody to be participate please reciprocate okay so between you and me so that something like i will come to understand okay my students are understanding very properly not there is no issue from my side okay so here the local currency is usd local currency is nothing but the currency which we are assigning to the company code where the local currency type is 10 and here the foreign currency is the euro so when you are defining the exchange rate type between the local currency to the foreign currency then it is called as the indirect quotation please remember this is a certification question to all of you when there is an exchange rate defined between the local currency to the foreign currency then it is called as indirect quotation if it is from the non local currency that is the foreign currency to the local currency then it is called as a direct quotation so the direct quotation is 1 euro is equal to 1. Point something 56 dollars 1 euro is equal to so 1 usd is equal to how many euros so something like it will come as a 0.33 something it will come a very very important this is if you if you divide it will come something about that so every transaction if you are posting in foreign currency not only this is an example i am telling for euro as on date of 23 1 but it will be defined for multiple currencies now here this is what exactly i have taken it as a m m is nothing but a bank average now what i am going to do i am saving here and i told that local currency to foreign currency it is called as indirect quotation and foreign currency to local currency it is going to be called as a direct quotation now here i have taken it as a m m is nothing but a bank average and you can also create your own exchange rate type also nothing to be worried hey mahesh i don't want to use m or b or g can i create a new exchange rate type definitely you can create a new exchange rate there is no worry but acp standard we have three exchange rate type if possible try to use them okay all of you okay now i have taken it as m now what i will do here if i come to the document type whenever yes. i am posting yes sir for each and every foreign currency there should be two entries one is direct and one is indirect need to be shown on the on the table yes, definitely sir okay thank you 
Definitely, sir. One, well, because one is the direct and one the another one is indirect rotation. Okay. Now, I will come back to this document type. I'll come back to the document type now here. When okay, the transactions which are allowed to post for ACA, any foreign currency postings. If I'm making a posting in ACA, so what I want to do here, the default document type should be M only. For me, it is going to be the M. M is nothing but a bank average. If you see here, M is nothing but a, a standard translation at the average rate. So I'm taking it as an M. So. Tomorrow, if I'm trying to post any documents, for example, today, okay, so today, for example, 2301-2020, I'm posting to my company code 1710, and this is also 2301-2020, the first period, period number one, one is the first period. Now here, I'm posting the transactions not in USD, I'm posting the transactions in Euro. In Euro, see, very, very important, not a local currency, it is a foreign currency. So what is the date? The date which I have entered is 2301-2020. Now what is the document type? It is SA. So the system, what it will do? First, it will go to the document type and SA. It will see whether is, is there any default document type is there or not. If it is there, yeah, then parallelly it will go and it will look out what is the translation date as and today because we have given it as a today's date because we have given it as a today's date 2301-2010 so it will go and look today date okay so what is the direct quotation and what is the index so this value will become as a this value will become as the rate over here automatically this value will become the rate for me why because you have given as a default document type as a m so Mahesh, uh, the, okay, so you're making as a default. Can we not make it as a default? Can we leave this field as an empty? Yes, 100%. You can also leave this field as an empty because we don't know. Okay, sometimes it will be the B, sometimes it will be the G, sometimes it will be the M. So different types we am going to be considering. So I'll enter the rates or I'll enter, I will enter the transactions over here while I'm posting the transaction. Don't make it as a default here. Just leave it the field as an empty. Okay, then up to, so then, the system will not take any default values for document type ESC. You can also leave this field as an empty. Very, very important. This is very, 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 very important actually. Any document type you can take, you, you have this field as a default values. Any document, a KR, KZ, KP, K, DR, DZ, DP for vendors, customer, assets, any document type you take. So there will be a default value which is called as the exchange rate type. Default means we are defaulting the exchange rate type. If you don't want, you can remove it. Before we before I come to the control data, I need to discuss more onto the number ranges. What is the number range? Now <clears throat> I'm posting a transaction to the ACA. ACA. So normally, when you go to normal, uh, when you go to any shop or something like, when you go to any wholesalers or dealers or retailers, something like, they will give you one voucher receipt, invoice receipt. Anywhere if you go, you will ask for an invoice. Even if you go to a supermarket or any mall or something like that, they will give the invoice receipt to you. Whatever the purchase of the goods you are done, they will give you an invoice receipt. For every invoice receipt, there will be a number will be there. Every invoice number, there will be a number. So that they are going to tear that particular page from the invoice book and they are going to update what are the items you have purchased and what is the total number and what is the total amount. And that invoice number, they will enter into the software in the books of accounting entry for this purpose. They will enter that invoice number over there. Or sometimes the invoice will be generated automatically through your uh, software, something like through your computer. So in SAP also, just I'll remove this. Okay. We call it as the OCHER book. We call it as the OCHER book, OCHER book. So I'm taking the voucher book 01. My book number is 01. Book number. It is a not a page number. It is a book number, like a checkbook number. Every checkbook you are, you are getting from the bank, there will be a checkbook number. Will be the same thing. Like this is my voucher number book, or this is a book number. So this book number I'm dedicating to only for one year. That is for 2020. This is for 2020. Okay, very good. Now, if I come here. If I come here, so how many leaflets are there in this book from number? So the leaflets are getting started from like this 0000100 means 
your book your leaflets are starting with 100 and i just extend it and you have something called as 0000, 000, 000 to 199 example i'm going to be taking see very very important sir this is very very important this is very very important now if i take my book 01 first book for the year of 2020 the total leaflets in this book is 100 to 199 so totally you can issue totally you can issue how many uh, how many invoices to a customer you can issue up to 100 invoices to the customer invoices because there are totally 199 100 to 199 means 100 leaflets are there next one there is one more book 02 this is for 2020 the number ranges should not be overlap if you take any book the number for a year for for one year the number ranges should not be overlap overlap is nothing but if you are taking a second book second book number already you have completed 199 so what the system is going to be expecting you have to start with the next series so 0000, 000, 000 200 to 000, 000, 000, 000 299 this is what exactly my next book number number ranges should not be overlap so it should be started with the next series of the number range just so like what I'm numbers no these are the document number ranges i'll tell you what is the document number ranges yeah yeah i yeah. know but just like in checkbooks also yeah. when we, they are same so, same yeah, concept exactly no right. number you're will right. be overlapping right exactly you're right absolutely right now here there are two there are two books i'm going to this is what exactly i call it as a number i call it as a number very very important and this is the year year only dedicated to one year and this is what exactly i call it as a from number and this is my two number and this is what exactly i call it as a two number okay now in my company, I'm posting the GLs. I'm posting the GL means document type ESCA. I'm posting the GLs also, GLs. And uh, Mahesh, I'm also posting the customer related transactions like customer invoice, that is a DR, customer payments also I'm going to do. And I'm also doing the vendor invoices, KR. I'm also doing the vendor payments also. Okay, very good. So this is the first one is the GL. And the second two are going to be called the customer invoice and the customer payments and the third and fourth are not the fourth and fifth are nothing but it is it's going to be called as vendor invoice and the vendor payments so for every transactions if you're posting to the sca very very important for every transaction you're posting to sca can you assign this book number zero one yes very good i will assign the zero one book number the 02 you what you do you assign it to the case set kr for example you 02 you assign it to the case like k, uh, like k, kr so what is happening i am assigning the number ranges here if i come back and see here i am assigning one number range the number range here i give it as a 01 01 is nothing but your number range okay one second system has hang up one second I'm assigning a number range which is going to be calling it as a 01. Okay. Now, what is a 01? Okay. So, this is the number range. This is the number range. I'm talking about the book number. I'm asking, I'm talking about the number range. Now, I'll go to click on number range information here. We have an option called as click on number range information. Now, it should be document types are at the client level if you have 30 company course all the 30 company course might be using the same document type for the general ledger posting all the 30 company course will use the dr as a customer invoice and dz as a customer payment like this it is the document types are at the client level these all the document types whatever the document types you're seeing here there are totally 48 document types are there all these document types are at the client level because i have 20 company course all the 20 company course i use the same document type psa but where you are differentiating 
for company to for company code to company code the number ranges should not be same okay so something like that now what i will do here i'll click on the number ranges i'll click on the number ranges now here we need to provide the company code company code is very very important for us because you are defining the number ranges at the company code level and this is called as a number range object object is nothing but where the design the program the accounting document number range okay so this is the object number i'll tell you what is the object number if you copy the object number and if you go to snro please make a note of this snro please make a note of this i'll tell the importance of this snro is the transaction press enter and the same object number whichever the object number right this is always the, okay so, so this is the, this is called as the number range object okay so give the number range object over here same object name and here click on change or click on display okay for example i'm clicking on the change make repairs in foreign namespace only if they are urgent only because this is very very priority so okay right so this is my number range so what is happening here the length of the domain character the very very important see here i'll explaining the concept of this particular number range now i'm explaining the concept of this number range i'm giving the 1710 as a company coach 1710 as a company coach now here this is what exactly the package of the number range for the program and here intervals the length is going to be the character 10 Ten length. I'm going to be taking the length as a ten. For example, if I go to the change intervals, okay. If I go to the change intervals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's totally ten. Okay. See here, totally ten. So character ten and the warning buffer percentage as the warning buffer. I given it as a ten percent. Warning buffer. I given it as a ten percent. What do you mean by ten percent here? If if I'll come to the same. if the document here you can see the okay here you can see the nr status net number range status actually i can give as a nr status is nothing but number range status nr status is nothing but number range s t a t u s status let us assume that i posted about nearly about uh, 30 40 documents i posted okay now it is coming about okay so the starting number will be 100 and you posted up to 30 documents so the net uh, run rate and uh, sorry ne net number range will be 140 or 150 of posted now very good totally one, totally how many documents you have posted totally 50 documents i posted from the starting with 100 now how many are still remaining how many are still remaining more 49 documents are still remaining in this series from 100 to 199 if you are reaching a if you are reaching up to 1 uh something like okay something like uh you are reaching up to 195 195 okay so still how many are there four are there still four documents are remaining so now at level of here if the documents are going to be reaching up to buffer of 90% means there are 10% is going to be the buffer me then the system has to issue a warning to me while i'm posting any document in sap while i'm posting the documents in sap for the particular transaction sa so the system has to issue a warning to me telling that your buffer has reached to 10% for the number range 01 01 01, 01. means i had to understand that yes i am reaching to the buffer means only 10% number range are missing for the posting of the transaction to 01 which i have assigned to sa so here this is what exactly i call it as a buffer buffer i am going to be taking buffer i'm going to be taking as a 10% you can also increase to 20 30% also but standard sap buffer is going to be the 10% so at what level the buffer has to issue the buffer has to issue at the sub object sub object data element which is called as a bukrs bukrs is nothing but a bukrs we normally we call it as a bukrs for the way this is the field name for the company code this is the field name for the company coach in sap every company code okay so something like if i come here this is the company code if i put f1 if on the company code and here you can see bukras 
So Bucharest is available in the field table called as the BKPF. So Bucharest is available in all in multiple tables. So Bucharest is nothing but BUKRS is nothing but company code field. Actually, it is called as the company code field. Why? Because now here, when you come here, you are maintaining the number ranges at the company code level. You are maintaining the number ranges at the company code level. So what is the field name for the company code? BUKRS in SAP. Very, very important. Please make a note. This is the universal. <laughs> BUKRS. So here. So the subjected element number is going to be the book rest. And to be business year flag. To be business year flag. Year is a mandatory. That's what I'm telling year is a mandatory for me for any intervals year is a mandatory yes exactly so if you see here this is for 2018 same 01 2019 same 01 2020 here so year is a mandatory for me every year i want this number ranges for the 01 very very important here very 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 important here so that is what exactly i have taken it as a to be business year flag is a mandate prefix is not going to be required prefix no number ranges in in front of any number range i don't want any prefix like a or b or c or like that i don't want any kind of prefix over here so no rolling number ranges should not be overlap i want the number ranges should not be overlap for example i'll tell you one example now here uh, i'll take the same thing now for 2020 i've taken the number ranges from 100002 1999999 until here i taken the number range for 2020, especially I'm talking 2020 for 01. Now, I want to insert a new line item. I'll copy the same thing. I'm copying here because I will insert one more line because I want to define some more number ranges. Okay, very good, very, very good. So where is the insert option here? There is the insert option here. This is what exactly insert the new line. Okay, see here. Again, I'm taking the same number range. See here. Again, I'm taking because already it is there here. See, already it is there. Already, if you see, it is there. But still, I'm giving the same. Still, I'm giving the same number range. Number range can be same for 2020. But the number ranges should not be overlap because already I have taken the same number range, same, same intervals for the 01 for 2020. Again, you're trying to take the same interval here. Now, what I have had? See, see, see I'm saving intervals already exist for 01 2020 so there should not be any rolling for the company very 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 important nothing to be happened with the rolling of the number range so i don't want to see any kind of rolling of the number range select the flag prevent the number range object interval for automatically starting from the beginning of the upper limit so what is my upper limit here upper limit is nothing but already i have taken it as a 99999 so already somebody has taken 299299 just i need to come down one second sir So for the zero, for the 2020 only, I had to look out 2020. So already someone has for 2020 for zero to somebody has already ended up to 299. So I cannot take the, this number for 2020 for zero three. Somebody has already taken the 399. So I cannot take so 499, 499, 599, 599, 699. Okay, some people have already taken up to 999999. Oh my God. So already people have taken the number ranges up to so many number ranges you can see here. Okay, they are starting with a one series also. They already started with one series. So what I will do here. So let me pull down. So already they have taken up to the number ranges till they have taken the number ranges from 800 to 8 lakhs to something like 8999. Okay, now I cannot take the same number. Range. So what I will do here. I had to start with the next series. I had to start with the next series. So I'll insert the line. Okay. I already inserted the line. So if I want to take something other number, for example, uh, AZ 2020. I'm taking a new document type. Okay. New number range. AZ I'm taking. So here, what I will do here, I'll change it to, I'll change it to 
something like nine because number ranges should not be overlapping with nine. And here I'll change it to nine. Zero, nine, 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 like this. So number ranges should not be overlapped. Number ranges should not be overlapped for the current year I'm talking. For the next year, you can take the same number range. For 2021, you can take the same number range. But for current year, whatever the number ranges you are going to be defining, make sure that the next number should be started with the next series, not with the same series from the 1 to 199. That's what exactly we are going to be calling it as a rollout. That's what we are calling it as a rollout. So here there are options are there customizing if i go to the customizing okay so and okay nr transaction what is the nr number range transaction what is the transaction you have to use fbn1 no need to come directly through the path here so if you want to define any number ranges if you want to define any number ranges so we have a path we have a certain path okay we are falling like this we are falling like this like SPRO, IMG, financial accounting, financial accounting for global setting, document, document type, document number ranges. Here we can also define there is a path is there document number ranges. And directly, instead of coming to the document types, okay, directly I come to the document number ranges and I give the company code and I can also maintain from here also. This is the path. But now you can also use the transaction instead of using the path like this. So SAP is allowing you to make it. LCP is allowing you to make a transaction code. What is the transaction code here? The transaction code is FBN1. Please make a note of this. FBN1. FBN1 is the transaction. FBN1. Here you can see here. This is what exactly I'm going to be taking. What is the transaction for the number range transaction? FBN1. So if I keep the FBN1 and if I press enter, see, automatically I'm coming to the number range intervals here. Automatically. So this is the transaction code we are going to be using for the FBN1. And buffering, parallel buffering is going to be required. Okay, buffering is going to be required for the parallel buffering. That's what exactly the number range which I have taken here. Number of buffers. Okay, so this we are the, the, the security people, the basis people will, will put out these options. Okay, we are not going to be required for us. Okay. So this is how, this is the object we are going to be taking, where we are going to be considering as the object. So this object, RF underscore B-E-L-E-G. Tomorrow, if you want to increase the buffer, tomorrow, if you want to decrease the buffer, the basis people will ask you, especially for a financial consultants only. Hey, Mahesh, tell me what is the object name for this number ranges? They will because very very important object name is very very important for you so you have to tell the object name to the basis people this is the object number rf underscore b l e g is the object number so they will come to here and they will change whatever the required changes that are going to be required here and they will tell that yes the required changes have been updated and we are going to be saving the data line object number is very 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 important that is the reason i'm telling this is the object number this is what exactly i call it as a object number Number range object number is RFBELEG. Please make a note of this. Okay. Now, here I am providing the company coach. Company coach. And here I am providing the documents. Now, once I started posting any document in my SAP, for example, I am posting a document now. Okay. And for today, I am posting a document for the SA. Same currency is going to be my USD. Okay. Now I'm posting some expenses accounts. This is my expenses account. I'm posting a transaction to USD. Oh, sorry, USD, same local currency to the account document type I'm taking as a SCA. Okay, right. How many dollars? Example, $100 I'm posting or $1,000 I'm posting. I'll tell you what is this cost center because in the coming classes we can discuss. I'm posting some office expenses and I'll tell this we are not done. Okay, what is 50? What is 40? Why I'm taking these are the posting keys? I'll tell you. I'll tell you next class we are going to discuss about the posting keys only. And I'll debit to one bank account. Okay, so I'll, I'll take one bank account.
I'll take one bank account. Okay, this is my bank account number. I'm debiting my expenses and creating my bank account. Requires the valid tax code. Now here I'm posting a one document here. You can see that I have entered two line items, one debit line item, another one is a credit line item, credit line item. Very, very important. In SAP, in SAP, normally, normally in a general practice, we call it as a DR. DR is nothing but a debit and the CR is nothing but a credit. CR is nothing but a credit. Normally we know that debit, we are debit. Now here in this case, I'm debiting the expenses account. And here I'm crediting the cash or bank account. So bank account. I'm taking the bank account. I'm creating it. This is, this is very clear. These both are belongs to the general ledger account, B, 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 GL account. And this is also bank is a GL account. I'm posting to which document type? I'm posting to the document type SCA. SCA is nothing but a GL. SCA is nothing but a SCA is nothing but a GL. GL is nothing but general ledger. In SAP, Whenever you're posting any documents, GL, DR, that is customer invoice, vendor payments, vendor invoice, vendor payments like this, we have different types of documents we are posting. In SAP, I'll take only one example now, which is called as SCA. SCA is nothing but a general ledger. So the DR always will be called as, in SAP terminology, the DR is nothing but a debit. Debit is always indicated with 40. Please make a note of this. These are the posting keys. Universal. These are the universal way. from 1978 where the, from the 1972 when the SAP has been introduced, we are using the same posting keys. 40 is a debit and 50 is a credit. Universal for only for general ledger, I'm not talking. I'm not talking for the customer invoice, customer payments, vendor invoice, the vendor, there are other transactions are also there. But I'm talking only for the GL, for the SCA I'm talking here. Whenever you're posting any documents, 40 is a debit and 50 is a credit. So here, if you see here, I, this is 40 is nothing but a debit. You are debiting this electricity utilities expenses and you are crediting this bank, main bank account, which is the main bank. And here you can see the symbol as a minus symbol, which is called as a credit. So 40 is a debit and 50 is a credit for universal. This is for general ledger I'm talking. For assets, for liabilities, for, for customers and vendors, there will be other transactions will be there. So whenever you're debiting any GL accounts, any GL account, not vendor, not customer, any GL accounts, it is a 40. So wherever you're creating, wherever you're creating any GL account, that will be the 50. Very, very important. So these are the posting keys for the general ledger accounting. Posting keys, we call them as a posting keys. We have the chapter, I will explain more into the posting keys. Now here you can see here, I'm posting a transaction to here. To the gen to the s here now I, i'll save it debit always should be equal to credit you know the logic i think everybody's know the logic if the debit is not equal to credit it is not a complete transaction now i'm posting an accounting entry post now a document number will be generated now see here see here document one zero 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 one was posted in the company code 1710 for which document type yes i'll come to the sa now where is the sa here it will be the sa will be here okay document type so i'll come to the sa double click sa what is the number range i have sent zero one company code i posted to the 1710 SA, where is the 01 for SA? Now you can see the first number has come. Automatically it will be updated here. You can see here. 1000001, you can see here. Document type 10001 posted in the company code 1710 because I'm defining the number ranges for 17 to for 2020. You can see here 2020. So you have started the number range with the 10000 and ending the number range here, which is 19999. So the two dot totally two documents have posted. One is 100 all zeros and second and just now we have posted which is called as the 100 so number range status will become as a first number first number so you can post the documents in 2020 up to 19999999 this is how the number ranges are going to be working second option 
option number two. So I'm coming over here. I'm coming over here. If you see, if you observe very carefully, 2018, 2019, 2020. I cannot make it as external because already they have been grayed out. External checkbox is there. This is what exactly I call it as the external checkbox. This is exactly I call it as the external checkbox. What do you mean by external means? If I select any number range as external, if I select any number range as an external, for example, while you're posting a document, while you're posting any transactions in SAP, you have to give the number range manually over here. The system will not, the system will not generate automatically. So when you're not, when you're not, when you're deselecting it, when you're deselecting it, then the system will follow the sequential. It will start with one zero 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 and it's second one zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like this. It will go at a sequential. If you're not if you're not selecting as external, if you are allowing the system to generate its own document number, so it will generate the document number. But if any number range is going to be selected as the external, for example, I selected as the external, then while you're posting a transaction. While you're entering the debit account here, you okay, the system will ask you to enter the number range here until or unless if you're not making the if you're not updating the number range, you cannot go to the next screen because you're selected as the external. Because you're selected as the external. So external means it is your understanding. Okay, so it will allow you to give any number from the series of 1000 to 199. Any number you can provide. It is not a sequential. Even if you follow sequential, doesn't matter. Even if you follow non-sequential also, you can give. So I can give any number. And for example, I can give this number. So I can give 1 lakh or I can give 1 lakh 99 or any number I can update over here. It's called as external number range. It's called as external. Any number. And make sure that once you allotted any number for the document, the same number can be allow can the same number cannot be allotted to another document. The system will throw an error. So already document number 1000099 was already posted. So make sure that you are allotting a number for the transaction for posting of any document entry. So that is what exactly we call it as the external. There is an option is there where we can call it as the external checkbox. For external checkbox, when you're selecting an external checkbox, the system will not show number range status it will be always will be zero only the system will not show the net number range the system always will show even if you have posted 40 50 documents also the nr status will show as a zero why because so for some documents you updated 99 some other documents you updated 89 some other documents you updated as a 71 some other documents you updated as a 64 like that which number it has to be taken? Which number should I, it, it has to take? No. So always the status will be zero only for the external checkbox. Only for internal. If you see here, these are the internal. System is generating the document automatically in a sequential from the series of 100 to 1999. Then here you have posted the two documents. One is first document and the second document is today we have posted. So this will be the net rate. Net, 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 uh, this is what exactly number in status as of today. For the internal number ranges. Clear to all of you? Clear? Yes. Yeah. Very, 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 very important. This is very, 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 very important. And one thing, once any document has posted, any once any document has posted, for example, if you see here. Till now, I can see here. Till now, I can see here for this 00 number range 2020. No one has posted till now. Next number range is showing as a zero. Means you can allow it for the external posting. If any number has generated like this, if any documents have posted here, automatically the external checkbox will be grayed out. You cannot select the external checkbox. Very, very important. It will be grayed out. Very, 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 very important. This is the this is what exactly we have to do. As long as the first entries happen, you can modify them. Ah, you can modify afterwards. Exactly. So go back. 
come to the NR status. This is the change option. Here you can modify here. Okay, you can remove this. For example, I am removing this. I am removing this. Okay, for 2020. And I'm saving here. Okay, enter the number interval less than the previous number. Now here, which is going to be allowed for us. Okay, now I'm changing. Okay, now go back. Again, come back here. Now see here. Now see here. Now, now I removed the number range. Now earlier it was 1000001. Now I removed, I made it as a zero. Now I can select now. But already two documents have posted. It will be in the database. Don't worry. Already <laughs> the two documents will be in the database. No need to worry. Okay. So if I remove means the document number ranges will not be deleted. So already if I go back and if you see here, already it will be there in the database. Don't need to worry. Okay. See here 1001, 1002. There already it will be in the database. But I want to make it as an internal. I want to make it as a external to internal. That's what I just removed the let remember and I made it as external. Like this. This is very, 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 very important. If you want to bring back, if you want to bring back, just I'll copy this because the number. If you want to bring back, come come here and put it back and make it as a one. Save it. Now come back. Now again click on change. Now it will not allow. See here. <laughs> This is how the concept of document type number ranges will work in SAP ECC or SAP S4. It's very tricky or very easy to understand? Easy to understand. Can I ask you a question? Uh, can you yeah. go back to the document type definition screen? Yes, sir. Okay, if you bring up like the essay document and there is a fields associated with the year when you define the document number range. Yeah. And under what circumstances you would not associate with the year? Here, the document types will not be associated with the year, sir. Very, very important. As I told you, the document types are defined at the client level. So if you have 20 company codes, all the 20 company codes will use the same document type. Now, so document types will be the universal, but for every document type, you are assigning one number range. You are assigning one number range. For example, I'll take you one example now. I have three company codes are this, sir. 17, 10. Yeah, I, I got the video. I didn't explain it properly. Maybe go back to the number range definition. Yeah, number range. Yes, exactly. So I'm giving the company code. It is a company code specific. Okay. Okay. Click on now the I'm yeah, I'm clicking on the change intervals. Yes, sir. Okay. So well, maybe I look at the wrong thing. Yeah, I was looking at the year. Somehow I kind of thinking that maybe there will be a time that the year is not being associated with the number range. No, here is associated. You can see here for the, for the current year 2020, here you can see the number range 01 for 2020 because already for 2019, we have winded up. Now we are in 2020, so we have created a new number range for the 2020. If you see here, 2020 is already available, so I started the number range is the same. So it will be a yearly uh, maintenance that we have to define a new year. Exactly. Every year, every year, before you go into, before you start the next year, 2021, in the December, in the month end closing, something in the year end closing activity, it is one of the activity we had to perform that you had to open the new number ranges for the document type SA, that is a 01 for the, for the year 2021. You have to make it as a mandatory. Thank you. Definitely, this is very, very important, I'm telling. So don't ignore this. I explained about the object also, RFBLEG. And I explained about the concept. I'll explain the control data. These are the five fields I will explain in the next class about that. Okay. Before that, I'll, I'll, I had to discuss about the posting keys also. There are the posting keys also, 40, the 40 and 50. Just now we discussed that. But how to, what, where exactly the posting keys are defined, we need to go into the posting keys also. If I come back. Here there is the posting keys are there. Here we can come to the define the posting keys are there. So we need to explain more. Okay, so 40 and 50 is available over here. You can see here. 
40. 40 is nothing but debit entry, debit for which account, GL account. 50 is nothing but credit entry only for the GL account. Like this for vendors and customers, we have different posting keys are also available over here. So we'll discuss in the next class about all these things. Okay, thank you very much all of you. Take care. Yeah, happy weekend. Thank you.